Good evening and welcome to tonight's presentation of the FCS National Championship game pitting the Dukes of James Madison taking on the number one seed in the country the Georgia Southern Eagles undefeated on a 16 game winning streak and they are looking to get revenge from last year's national championship where they just fell short as we will go ahead and see the teams come on to the field now it should be a really exciting matchup i am really excited to bring you guys this national championship game if you're excited about this national championship as well make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel too as we'll see who we corso is going to pick and he will be rocking with the georgia southern eagles and now there is going to be no more time to waste this is something that you guys have been waiting for ever since we started this season the journey to the national championship game whittling down from 119 teams all the way down to just the two that are gonna be on your screen and now the wait is going to officially be over as Brian Henry, the freshman red shirt, he is going to kick things off. And with the boot of his leg, the national championship game is officially underway. Returned by David Foran, who gets knocked down quick. Let's check the lineups. So this James Madison offense is led by its quarterback in the air reign, Stephen Rogers. The junior standing at six foot two is a first team all conference guy. It's going to be extremely important to win this national championship. However, also keep an eye out for Martin Bryant. He's the running back on this team. And while he's a power running back, he can also catch out of backfield and he'll need some touches to maintain a critical balance here to win this game. But the most important part of any offense is the offensive line. And James Madison's got some good ones. Three all-conference guys in Anthony Anderson, Eric Watson, and Keith Payne. He is going to bring some pain to the Georgia 7 front 7 if they're not ready for the challenge. Also starting on the offensive line is the junior Trey Jones who will be playing at the center position. And sophomore Danny Rice, 6'6", 311 pounds. He'll also be very critical in the interior. And finally, the most explosive and exciting part about this offense is the receiving core, which does feature free customs in Jody Gentry, who's a first-team all-conference nominee, Brad Ondrowsey, and Jonathan Henderson as well. But the main person to watch out for is David Forn. He's the number one wide receiver and also the main kick and punt returner for the James Madison Dukes, who you just saw took that kick off to start this game. So we actually seen these two teams play against each other last year in the quarterfinals. And it went Georgia Southern's way. It's important for James Madison there to get a crucially good start. As Stefan Rogers will start things out with a play action. He's got some time. Throws it out to the right-hand side. And he's going to find one of his stud receivers, Jody Gentry, who is going to get things going with a 34-yard reception. They're already threatening inside Georgia Southern territory. So a first and 10 from the 43 yard line. This time we will see uh, the running back get involved. That's Martin Bryant there. That's going to make that catch downfield. And now we're looking at a team that's almost in the red zone already. Making good progress. As Rogers going to try to throw towards the end zone now. But it's going to overthrow his receiver, Brandon Connor. And you absolutely hate to see it. And already a critical third down opportunity. Rodgers looking towards the end zone again. It's looking for David Forn. But it's going to be broken up in the end by the custom. DeAndre Dowdell the second. And James Madison will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Quan Dixon, the senior redshirt, will put the field goal up in the air. But it's going to be no good. We'll now check the lineup for the Georgia Southern offensive unit. So this Georgia Southern offense, and with no surprise, is led by Ikeda Woods. And a little bit of a spoiler for the offseason episode, he is the Heisman Trophy winner too. He's also got two very good running backs in the backfield. Blake Williams, he's a first-team all-conference nominee at the running back position. Also returns kicks and punts. And of course, in that option offense, Derek Johnson is extremely important. And he's just a true freshman 
coming in here and starting in the national championship game. As for the receivers that Ikeda Woods will be throwing to, they have the tight end Aaron Smith who played in last year's national championship game along with Dallas Whitaker, but also keep an eye out for true freshman Gary Robinson who has emerged on the second half of this season. He has been a nice contributory piece for the Georgia Southern offense in his true freshman campaign. He's got some good size on him as well. And of course, the Georgia Southern offensive line is among the best in the entire country. Made up of three All-Americans and Cedric Hart, Andrew Johnson, and Rich Nixon, who did win the Remington Award for the Georgia Southern Eagles this year. But they also have some quality tackles. True freshman Andrew Bird, who is one of your customs, as well as Matt Reed, their true freshman. And while not on the All-American list, they were first-team All-Conference nominees. So now we get a glimpse of the Georgia Southern offense led by your Heisman winner, Ikeda Woods. As he'll start this uh, first snap under center as he's going to run the triple option. Gets it out to the left-hand side. He pitches it out to the tight end, Aaron Smith, who gets a decent chunk of yard. It's a six-yard gain as Ikeda Woods looks to get a big play downfield. He's going to get it out to Blake Williams. Blake Williams will already... Get it across the 40-yard line. This is a very efficient offense. This is a team that also likes to take a lot of time off the clock, and we're seeing some of that early. Not getting a ton of big plays downfield, at least not yet, but they know how to move this football, and they're also one of the best third down teams in the entire country. As Ikeda, he's going to take the pitch. He's going to try to run it downfield. Breaks a couple of tackles. He's going to sidestep a man getting that EA cheese on his first carry of the game and it goes for a 24 yard gain first down for the georgia southern eagles and they are soaring on their first drive of the game we'll see if they can finish it up first and 10 from the 25 yard line it's going to be a run up the middle for the fullback that's Derek johnson the true freshman who gets it forward for a first down and now a goal line situation for the first points of the game. Ikeda in the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. David Benelli met him at the goal line, but it wasn't enough. And Georgia Southern will take the lead. So here's the starting lineups for the Georgia Southern defense in this football game. As we start with the defensive line, we got Gene Gaines and Dan Graves. Coming out for the defensive end, Gene Grains is a junior, while Dan Graves is a freshman with first-team all-conference nominees. But rounding out the middle of the defensive line is Chad Goodman and Justin Wilson. Both have a lot of experience and have a first-team all-conference nominee between the two. But it is this linebacking core that truly puts some fear into the front seven. Led by Demetrius Abdullah, he played in the national championship last year, and he comes back as a first-team all-conference nominee. Plus, Mark Leslie and Chance Bruiser, who are very young players, only second years in college football, they are also more than capable of bringing the pain and know a thing or two about stopping the run as well. But the unit that will be the most tested on the defensive side of the football, though, is the secondary, and I think they might be ready for it. This group is led by DeAndre Dowdell, the second, the first team All-American, but there's talent all around this place. Josh Rooney, he's a true freshman. He's a first team All-Conference. Tyson Williams, a freshman redshirt. He's also first team All-Conference, and Trey Willis brings a lot of experience. He's the defensive captain of this defense here for the Georgia Southern Eagles. So James Madison made good progress on their first drive, but missed the field goal. We'll see if they have a better drive the second time around. As now, Stephen Rogers is going to drop back the pass, but he's not going to have any time to throw this football as he gets dropped in the backfield by the freshman custom, Marquise Lewis. And just like that, James Madison, they are actually going to go free and out. So it's a fourth and 17 from the 18-yard line. And Kenny Vinson, the junior punter, he's going to have to punt this football away. It's going to be a fair catch or Georgia Southern will be taking over again. Now for James Madison to pull off the upset here in the national championship game, this defensive line, as well as other defensive units, will need to step up. They're more built to stop the pass, and it's a very young unit. They are led by Cole Meadows and Roger Carter, who are both first-team all-conference guys. 
But the X Factors on the defensive side of the ball is Jamal Brown and Bill Childress, who are going to really need to step up to attack this option offense. As for the linebacking core, this is also an extremely young unit, and it is led by the sophomore Emmanuel Lee, who is an impact player, so he is the uh, defensive one of the defensive captains on this team. Also on the other sides, we got D Stephen Pruitt, the true freshman, as well as Anthony Bain, the sophomore, who are predicated on stopping the run, and that will be huge in today's matchup. And finally, in the secondary, while these are mainly coverage guys they will need to be helpful in terms of stopping the run considering they don't pass offense in this secondary we got jose pilo one of your guys's customs who's a first team all-american as well as one of the best safety duos in the nation in alex wallace and david Bonelli, both of which are first team all conference nominees jd stuckey is in there as well he is stepping in for the injured alex burtz He's a sophomore that did not receive any all-conference nominations. So it looks like this defense is going to have to carry the day as Georgia Southern takes over once again. Already with a 7-0 lead. Derek Johnson is going to take the pitch once again. He's already had a few carries in this one. Relatively efficient as well. He's averaging close to 10 yards per carry. Their offensive line of theirs is doing a great job so far. As now, second and four from the 40-yard line. Another option to the left-hand side. And Akita Woods, he's going to get loose. Eventually chopped down by David Bonelli. But Akita Woods, that is a very dangerous quarterback that other teams are going to have to deal with. Akita Woods playing in his final college game. He's making the most of it, leading two very good drives so far. Can he finish this one too? First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Akeda, he's going to take the pitch. He's going to move it up the middle of the field. And it's another first down for Georgia Southern. And moving into the red zone now. They've been very good in the red zone. 86% of the time, they finished with points. Woods throws to the right-hand side. He's going to find the sophomore custom, Joseph I. Krakowski in the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And Ikeda Woods just throwing it out in the flat, asking him to make a play. And he sure did right there. Huge play for Georgia Southern. And not only that, they also got a free and out against their, uh, their counterparts on the other side. So Georgia Southern on the verge of just blowing this game wide open early in this game. And with another big run from Ikeda Woods, it is starting to look exactly that way as that will take us... Through the end of the first quarter, Georgia Southern enjoying a nice and early 14-0 lead. So now we jump into the second quarter of action. First and 10 from the 33-yard line as we got another read option to the right-hand side. Joseph I. Krakowski is going to have the pitch, and he's going to fight his way to the first down marker, and they will give it to him as well. The James Madison defense, they are just looking exhausted they are not very used to stopping this option offense and georgia southern is taking advantage another red zone chance for the georgia southern as woods he's gonna take it quickly he is just he is just absolute dynamite i don't know what else to say about this kid six carries 132 yards in the national championship game he's not playing games for second and goal from the free yard line another option pitches it out to blake williams and blake williams will be brought down but like Hato Woods, he's going to have a head injury. So the backup quarterback, he's going to have to come into the game now. David Benson, he's your backup. And he is presumed to be the starter next season. So maybe the David Benson era potentially starting. And James Madison's defense, they are going to hold up at the line of scrimmage. Emmanuel Lee, you know, breaking down the fullback. And then the rest of his gang bringing down the rest of the option players so georgia southern will have to settle for a field goal attempt brian henry uh comes in for just a 23 yard field goal attempt should be an easy make and it is georgia southern will finish up the drive a 17 to nothing lead so we do find out about a Kato woods injury though and he is out for the rest of this game with a concussion so now it's david benson's time to shine a Kato woods in his final career game it's going to be done early, so now we commence the David Benson era. 
Second and nine from the 49-yard line. Benson running the option. Gets it out to Joseph I. Krukowski. Krukowski's got space to work. Down the sideline. Oh, he's got a manual lead to beat. And Joseph I. Krukowski is going to run it into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And how about Krukowski being in the right place in the right time? Ain't nobody going to be catching him from behind, at least not today. So 24 to nothing lead. And James Madison, they are desperately going to need a spark here. We'll see if they can get it from their receiving core. As Joey Gentry, he muffs the kickoff and it goes out of bounds inside the free yard line. They do not call it a penalty because it was a muffed kickoff. So James Madison, they are going to be locked up inside their own five yard line. A very dangerous place to be and almost getting to him is Justin Wilson, the senior defensive lineman. We got a serious safety situation. Rodgers throws it right inside, gets it out to Martin Bryant, but Martin Bryant does not get out of the end zone. It's a safety and Georgia Southern will also take over. Just a disaster for James Madison here in this first half. They just need something to go right. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon because Joseph I. Krakowski, he is going to take the carry up the left-hand side. 33 to nothing. This is not what I have expected whatsoever. I thought Georgia Summer was going to be favored. I did think that, but not blow out James Madison like they are right now. This is a massive issue, and James Madison, they go free and out again. So Georgia Southern has one more chance to put points up on the board before we go into the halftime locker room. And David Benz is actually going to drop back the pass. He throws to the right-hand side. He was targeting Gary Robertson, but it is incomplete. So they try again on a third and long. This time they're going uh, a different set. They actually hand off to Blake Williams, and they're going to pick up a first down and a lot more. They will not be getting out of bounds, though. So Georgia Southern, they will be taking their second time out. And really, how about the blocking there by that offensive line? Andrew Johnson, the true freshman, he was leading the way. Just some great job blocking. We'll see if they go back to bat passing game, though. That's first and 10 for the 46-yard line. James Madison, they send the blitz. And Bill Childress, the freshman red shirt, is actually going to bring him down for a sack. Georgia Southern, they're going to go into their no huddle. Next play after a six-yard loss. It's going to be a running play to the right-hand side. It's their fullback, Derek Johnson, who does not get a very big gain. However, the big issue is we do have a flag on the field, and it's going to be called against James Madison, a face mask by Emmanuel Lee, the sophomore middle linebacker. So it's an automatic first down because of that. And eventually, Georgia Southern are going to get their way into the red zone again. Aaron Smith is going to, you know, make... No, it's actually Dallas Whitaker. I thought I saw Aaron Smith make that catch. Uh, Dallas Whitaker also uh, playing in his final career game. He's a senior red shirt. And while James Madison will not allow them to get into the end zone, you don't want to give up any more points. And it looks like unless... Brian Henry somehow finds a way to miss a 21-yard field goal. That's exactly what we are going to see. The kick is up, and it is going to be good. So that does take us into the halftime locker room, and Georgia Southern, nothing short but dominating. 36 to nothing is going to be your score at halftime. So now we jump into the second half, and you can just see the score, uh, the total yards disparity, 413 to 66. Uh, James Madison could not play any worse of a first half than they just did. So we'll see if they can rally back and uh, try to make this at least a little bit more interesting of a football game. They do like to put the ball through the air, so they are capable of getting some big plays on the offensive side of the football. But it's got to start with getting stops on the defensive end. Georgia Southern, they will start with the football to start this second half. As David Benson is going to line up under center, he's going to go roll to the left. He's going to pitch it out. This is Joseph I. Krakowski. Krakowski, he's all by himself. One man left to beat, and he's going to just barely be knocked down. That is the custom Jose Bilo, the true freshman, that just saved another touchdown. Krakowski, if he was able to get away from that last defender, he was going to be gone like a girl in a country song. But a couple plays later, it looks like 
Krakowski could be getting the pitch, although David Benson never get rid of the football if he pitched it out to Krakowski there. I thought it was going to be a touchdown. Instead, it is going to be first and goal from the free yard line as George Southern has done a very good job in third downs. Two for free on the day so far. Third and goal from the four yard line. It's going to be a pro set. It's a fullback. It's going to be Derek Johnson in the end zone once again. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And the Eagles get yet another one up on the scoreboard. And this game was truly, and I mean truly, never in doubt. Georgia Southern is going to be your national champions this year. They will win by a final score of 46-7. to They claim their very first national championship after falling just short of that crystal ball back in year number three. They get that redemption season completed. Congratulations to the Georgia Southern Eagles on a perfect year. So congratulations to the Georgia Southern Eagles as they win their very first national championship here in this series. And now we'll go ahead and check out the individual stats for both teams in this game. We will start, of course, with the champions over on Georgia Southern side. Akita Woods did not play much today. He did end up getting hurt, but he was effective when he was in the game. Akita Woods was one for one for 16 yards and a touchdown pass. David Benson, the junior quarterback and future starter for this team, he was three for four for 40 yards. But uh, someone who had a massive day today, though, was Joseph I. Krakowski. He is a sophomore custom in just nine carries. Ends up running the ball for 213 yards and two touchdowns in this one. He was named your player of the game. Ikeda Woods also took care of business on the ground. He had six carries for 132 yards and a touchdown. Speaking of finding the end zone, Derek Johnson was in there as well. He had seven carries for 42 yards and a score. For the receivers, not very many uh, much involvement for the receivers today as each uh, of the receivers that you see to get one catch. Blake Williams had one for 17. Gary Robinson had one for free. Dallas Whitaker had the longest catch for 20 yards, but it was also Joseph I. Krakowski in his one catch for 16 yards that was able to find the end zone. Defensively, this team was indeed led by Tyson Williams. He actually led the team in tackles in this one. The first team all-conference nominee had four tackles and also had an interception in the second half when things were completely out of control and we decided to uh, sim out and whatnot. There was also two sacks that this team got. Justin Smith, the sophomore redshirt, got one of the sacks. That was his only tackle of the day. And Marquise Lewis, the true freshman and second team all-conference nominee, also got a sack. He had two tackles on the day. Other than the interception that Tyson Williams got, there was nobody else that uh, was able to get an interception in this game. And there was also no fumbles, so it was indeed the only turnover of the game. As for James Madison, your runners up, this was a difficult performance for them in all facets of the game. Stephen Rogers ended up going 11 for 22, 135 yards, one interception, and one pink. Steven Terry, the sophomore redshirt, did step in relief. He was two for three for nine yards. For the running game, there was not much going on on the running game whatsoever, as Jamal Wright, the freshman tailback, actually led the team in yards. He only had 15 of those. Everyone else was held to under 10 yards, or in case of one of the players, Stephen Rogers, he had negative three yards rushing. For the receivers, nobody was really able to get opens consistently for James Madison. However, the senior tight end, Marvin Connor, he's a backup tight end. He had free catches for 13 yards and also had the only touchdown for James Madison in this one. Martin Bryant, the sophomore running back, also haven't had free catches for 19 yards. However, uh, the, the player that had the most receiving yards today, though, was Mike Crum, the junior tight end and first team all conference nominee. He had 52 yards, which did lead all James Madison wide receivers. The only other person with more than 20 yards, though, was the junior Jody Gentry, who is a custom. Now, it was a rough day for the defensive end, but, you know, there were some uh, bright moments for this James Madison defense. Jose Pilo, for example, led the team in tackles today. He ends up with nine tackles, but did nothing else in this one. Anthony Bain was second in tackles while on the team. 
He had six tackles for one TFL. In addition, they were also able to get a couple of sacks in this game. Emmanuel Lee got one of the sacks. He had three tackles, and that was his only TFL. And then the freshman red shirt, Bill Childress, 6'5", 224 pounds. He also managed to get a sack and three tackles in this game as well. That being said, there was no turnovers forced on the uh, defensive side of the football for James Madison. There was no interceptions. However, there was a forced fumble by J.D. Stuckey, who is a sophomore corner for James Madison. He also had four tackles in this game. But actually, no, there was a fumble recovery. It must have happened when we were super simming. Because let's be honest, if this game was, with this game being out of control, I was not going to show everything. Uh, Bill Traildris was the one who did recover that fumble. But with the conclusion of the national championship game, what we do see for the very first time is that some team did finish a perfect regular season, and it was Georgia Southern. They will finish the year 17 and 0. 17 game winning streak and Georgia suffered they are on top of the world so congratulations to that Eagles football team and it's going to be interesting to see where this program goes from there as well as what teams rise and fall in the upcoming seasons and speaking of new seasons on the horizon what we will end up having in the very next episode is that we will actually have the offseason recap. So what we'll have with the offseason recap is I will show the award winners for not only the Heisman Trophy, but for other awards as well. The All-Americans that were nominated as well, among other things such as who's going to go to the NFL or transfer up to an FBS program. And of course, everyone's favorite, that custom player information that will be included in the recruiting portion of the offseason recap. So guys, I hope you are excited for this episode. I will uh, see uh, who ended up winning the bracket challenge as well as finish runner up in the bracket challenge. If you ended up finishing first or second, uh, I will send an email out to what you ended up using uh, in terms of uh, what you use to enter in the bracket challenge in the first place. So keep an eye out for that if you were in the running. But in the meantime, this is John Jake Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you have to be brand new. Take care, everybody.